His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Oman on the occasion of Oman's National Day. His Majesty expressed his best wishes to His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq for good health and happiness and to Oman and its brotherly people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Majesty the King praised the deep-rooted brotherly relations and the close ties between the two brotherly countries and peoples and the continued growth they are witnessing at all levels, wishing these good relations further growth and development to meet the aspirations of the peoples of the two brotherly countries and achieve their common interests. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on the occasion of Morocco's Independence Day. His Majesty expressed his best wishes to the Moroccan monarch for good health and happiness and to Morocco and its people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. His Majesty praised the deep relations between the two kingdoms and their brotherly people and the continuous development they are witnessing, wishing these distinguished relations further development and prosperity to serve the common interests of the two countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain after a visit to the United Kingdom in response to an invitation received from His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, during which His Majesty met with King Charles III and they reviewed the development of close relations and the paths of historical cooperation and joint action between the two friendly countries and continued supporting and developing these at all levels to serve their mutual interest in addition to discussing the most prominent regional and international developments, especially the developments in the Middle East. His Majesty also paid a visit to Morocco. Upon return, His Majesty was received by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of the UK to Bahrain, Alastair Long. In a special interview, the Bahraini ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, emphasized the depth of the strong historic relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. The Bahrain-UK relationship, which spans over 200 years, is built on firm foundations of close friendship, mutual respect, and shared interests. This enduring partnership has fostered effective cooperation across various development sectors. Aligning with the aspirations of both nations, the relationship is greatly supported by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom. Beyond official ties, the bond extends to close connections between the royal families, reflecting deep mutual respect and friendship that continues to enhance collaboration across sectors of shared objectives and mutual benefits. Over the past 208 years, the relations between Bahrain and the UK have seen steady growth. The close bonds have facilitated strong understanding and coordination between the leadership of both nations, solidifying their shared regional and international interests. The UK remains a strategic ally for Bahrain, with the bilateral relationship evolving through numerous agreements, cooperations, protocols, and memoranda of understanding across diverse areas including politics, diplomacy, security, defense, economy, culture, and education. The exchange of visits between the two royal families over the year had a significant role in giving further impetus for the outstanding bilateral relations between our two countries. This reflects the advanced status of the robust historical Bahrain-UK relations and indicates the continuum of the strategic partnership between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Sultan of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq on the occasion of Oman's National Day. His Royal Highness also sent a similar cable to Oman's Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers, His Highness Sayyid Fahd bin Mahmoud Al Said. 
and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on the occasion of Morocco's Independence Day. His Royal Highness also sent two similar cables to the Crown Prince of Morocco, His Royal Highness Prince Maulai Hassan bin Mohammed and the Prime Minister of Morocco, Aziz Akhnouch. The Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Decree 90 for the year 2024 regarding the designation of the minister responsible for the legislative authority for Bahrain Mumtalakat Holding Company based on the proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs shall replace the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications as the minister responsible before the legislative authorities, two councils for Mumtalakat. And the Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 3 for the year 2024, amending provisions of Edict 1 of 2022 regarding the restructuring of the Board of Directors of Bahrain Mumtalakat Holdi Company. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs shall be appointed as a member of the Board of Directors of Mumtalakat, replace sir, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications. The term of membership shall extend until the end of the current Board's tenure. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs and captain of the endurance team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has been honored by the International Equestrian Federation, FEI, for his unprecedented achievements in international endurance racing as the only Arab rider to achieve such global distinction. The honor recognizing his remarkable achievement of winning the world championship titles in two consecutive editions, the 2024 championship in Montpazier, France, and the 2022 championship in the United Arab Emirates. During the FEI General Assembly in Abu Dhabi, the ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Arab Emirates and honorary vice president of the International Equestrian Federation, Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the award on behalf of His Highness from the FEI president, Ingmar Divos. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed gratitude for the recognition, viewing it as a motivation to continue contributing to the sport of endurance racing. This honor highlights His Highness' significant contributions to further developing this ancient sport and his continued excellence in international competitions. Team Victorious kicked off the 2024-2025 endurance season successfully, winning the 120-kilometer international race yesterday at the Bahrain International Endurance Village. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Team Victorious Captain His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa said that the team's victory in the first and second places is a motivation to make more achievements in the upcoming races and confirms the team's journey that is full of achievements praising the efforts of the riders and team members in achieving the goals set by the team. The victorious team was able to achieve the first and second places through Isa Hamid Al Anizi who was crowned with the title, while Shahad Walid Al Ahmed won the second place, while Az Zaim team won the third place through Yusuf Muhammad Al Sadoun. The stages of the race witnessed strong competition, with speeds reaching more than 26 kilometers an hour. The race witnessed wide participation from local stables and riders from Saudi Arabia and Jordan.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the weekly meeting in which the council rejected a proposed law regarding the commercial law promulgated by Legislative Decree 7 of 1987. It also approved amending provisions of Legislative Decree 21 of 2015 regarding private health institutions. The council then reviewed the report of the Shura Council delegation that participated in the 11th consultative meeting of the Association of Senate, Shura, and similar councils in Africa and the Arab world. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, participated in the fourth global high-level ministerial conference on antimicrobial resistance in Saudi Arabia with the participation of senior officials and experts worldwide. The minister reaffirmed Bahrain's support for the outcomes of the Jeddah conference and the One Health approach while showcasing Bahrain's national strategies to combat antimicrobial resistance AMR. She emphasized the importance of international collaboration, knowledge sharing, and adopting global practices to enhance health security. During a panel discussion on enhancing governance, the, she re reiterated Bahrain's dedication to addressing AMR threats through regional and global cooperation. On the sideline of the event, the minister met with the Minister of Health of Latvia, Dr. Hussam Abu Marai to explore strategic partnerships and shared expertise aimed at improving healthcare services. The minister also met with the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization representatives. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahrain Teachers College organized a graduation ceremony for the 13th cohort of its 319 students. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of Education and Chairman of the University of Bahrain's Board of Trustees. Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma and a number of officials, academics, and parents. Bahrain Teachers College continues to provide its developed academic programs and achieve its visions and mission towards graduating qualified caters thanks to the college's approach in developing the skills of its graduates to be highly qualified and competent. We are celebrating those who are graduating from Bahrain Teachers College. This is the most exciting day of our year. We're very proud of all that the students have achieved. They've worked incredibly hard over the last five years. They've been studying in schools, studying in the college itself, getting as many skills and knowledge and acquisition of everything that they need in order to be excellent teachers. So what we're seeing today is the future of education in Bahrain, and we're very excited to see what they've done. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its preparations to host the 9th Global Gastronomy Tourism Forum, which will be held for the first time in the Middle East at Exhibitions World Bahrain on November 18th and 19th. The forum will highlight best practices in gastronomy, tourism sector, the role of the sector in stimulating the economy, as well as topics related to sustainability, environment, and community development. On the sidelines of the forum, the opening of a number of new international restaurants in Bahrain will be announced, as well as the establishment of partnerships between local, regional, and international stakeholders so the the, the conference uh, the event will be uh, over two days focusing on on local gastronomy showcasing our local talents and local chefs that will be uh, uh, inshallah presented uh, in the event and, and being part of the event not only in participating only but it's more of uh, showcasing uh, the restaurants in Bahrain showcasing their recipes and how can we put them in touch with the international chefs and maybe explore some opportunities when it comes to collaborations between between the international chefs. Um, the numbers are looking great. Uh, so it's a, it's a day before the main event. Uh, the numbers are, we're, we're at around 630 participants. Um, half of them, I would say, are internationals. Uh, and, and this time we targeted uh, international chefs that will be basically uh, exchanging those experiences uh, with local chefs here in Bahrain and showcasing the gastronomic scene in Bahrain in general. The Bahrain International Air Show is a prominent global event that brings together the latest innovations in the aviation and defense sectors. And at this year's edition, the participation of the US B-52 bomber was one of the highlights of the event. More details in this report. The US B-52 has its roots in the 1940s, when the U.S. began thinking about a heavy strategic bomber after World War II. 
This massive bomber is one of the main pillars of the U.S. Air Force, as it represents an effective tool for strategic deterrence, as it is characterized by its superior capabilities to fly over 14,000 kilometers without the need for refueling, while carrying up to 31,500 kilograms of ammunition and weapons, as it is used in precision strikes, air surveillance missions, and air support for ground forces. The presence of this iconic bomber at the Bahrain International Air Show was not only a display of military capabilities, but also a symbol of cooperation and partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., highlighting strategic cooperation and enhancing regional security and stability, introducing the public to the concepts of strategic deterrence and the importance of military aviation in protecting international security and demonstrating the advancement of U.S. military technology and its ability to meet the requirements of operations in the 21st century. The Minister of, Just, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, in collaboration with the Information and E-Government Authority, announced the adoption of the National Notification System, Ishaarat, for the judicial announcements effective January 2025. This initiative aims to enhance service efficiency and support environmental sustainability. The Ministry stated that this step completes the digital transformation of all the court notifications by utilizing the unified database provided by the platform. The adoption of the system will streamline litigation procedures, ensuring judicial announcements and delivery to individuals through reliable and up-to-date contact details. The ministry urged the lawyers and litigants to register with the national notification system via the kingdom's national portal bahrain.ph. The Sakhir area is set to launch its camping season from November the 20th, 2024 to February 20th, 2025. Authorities are enhancing efforts to implement safety standards and establish necessary guidelines to ensure a secure experience for all the campers. More details in this report. As the camping season approaches, the Sakhir area in the Kingdom of Bahrain is preparing to welcome camping enthusiasts from November 20th, 2024 to February 20th, 2025. The Sakhir area is celebrated for its stunning desert landscapes and mild climate, making it a prime destination for outdoors activities. The relevant authorities have established comprehensive plans to ensure a safe and enjoyable camping experience focusing on public safety and environmental preservation. Camping fosters a unique connection with nature, allowing families and friends to bond away from daily distractions. The season encourages social interactions as people gather around campfires, share meals, and engage in recreational activities. Additionally, camping nights provide an ideal opportunity for stargazing, contributing to a sense of peace and relaxation.